Good morning, what a beautiful day. Today we're just focusing on wood prep because that's obviously a massive part, especially coming up to winter. Everything seems to be so damp and rotting at the minute. So wood prep is definitely on the agenda. And I'm also on with making a spatula. I haven't carved or done any sort of carving for a long while. So hopefully this spatula turns out all right. And it's just, I don't know, it's a really wholesome task. Right, I've made some good progress in my spatula. I'm getting there. I just need to finish it off a little bit. We just got back from a walk with Buster and I'm now going to light a fire, but I'm going to use this beautiful block of fat wood that was kindly given by Michael Cashler and it's, it smells so good. So I'm going to make some shavings, light the fire, get some food on. I also wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who's left such nice comments and messages about my Land's End to John O'Groats trip. I got such nice feedback, which is lovely. It's just so good after that trip coming here and sort of reflecting on it and how amazing and brilliant it really was. I have asked you all to leave me some questions as I'm going to be doing a Q&A in this video. So I may do it around the fire later or just potentially tomorrow. So yeah, I also want to talk about the Vivo Barefoot shoes that I've been using recently because I get a lot of questions about them. Evening is drawn in. It is about, well it's quarter to seven now and I'm just making some more headway with the spatula. I haven't done carving for ages, like I've said, so it's nice to get back into the groove of it again. So I'm now back in the tent, super chilled, super cozy. But yeah, it's been a beautiful day. It's been so nice. 
I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Morning. I slept so well last night. I think I even got like 10 hours sleep, which I wasn't planning on. I just got my morning coffee, which I always start the day with. And when I'm up here, I tend to always go barefoot for a while. So <laughs> I've been on a journey for a few months now, and it started when, well, I think three things kicked it off. The first thing was speaking to my lovely friend Yvonne from Dale's Way Therapy and she was telling me about Vivo Barefoot Shoes and how beneficial they are. I stayed with them before going on a trip and we watched a documentary called Earthen and it is so good, it's an amazing documentary all about being barefoot and the health benefits and how it prevents inflammation in your body because years ago we would be barefoot a lot of the time we would be sleeping straight on the floor and we were so connected and then this led me on to well, I can't be barefoot all the time so I need a shoe that still gives me that sort of ability to have foot strength and when I go barefoot again, I won't struggle as much. Having Vivos strengthens your feet, your ankles, and all the way up, really. A study did show that a person wearing a pair of Vivo barefoot shoes for six months strengthened their feet by 60%, which is absolutely amazing. And then I went on to watch The Shoe Spiracy, and I watched the documentary. It's an eight-minute one. That's another one I recommend. I'll put it in the description. But that is so beneficial as well, seeing how powerful and amazing these shoes are. And when I recently went to a Vivo meet the other day, we met in West Sussex in this lovely woodland. And people came from all over. And we stayed in the woodland for a night, turned our phones off. We were being barefoot. I did an animal flow routine, which I've never done, which is I saw a yoga. What was so powerful was seeing people from each different walks of life coming here and all sharing the same passion for being barefoot, from like powerlifting, a woman that powerlifts for GB, yoga instructors, really strong athletes, and Sarah from Fit for, Event Fit for Adventure was so lovely to meet her, really down to earth and really great. Um, and she does like paddle boarding, cycling, hiking, and then obviously me. It was really amazing to see that passion for Vivos and sort of the connection to your body, but also what's around you and being connected to the ground. And then the final thing was my story. So why I have personally transitioned over to barefoot shoes. So if you see, I've literally been wearing them for, I think, three months. And that's all I've been wearing now. Uh, I got rid of a lot of my old shoes. I was sold them or gave them to people and have now just committed, gone full in. So my story was, I did the Hebridean way. I don't know if you've all watched that. And I wore solid boots, like what you're recommended to wear, boots with thick soles that protect your feet and sort of disconnect you from the ground. I, on the whole, have wide feet. They've got wider since wearing barefoot shoes, but because the splay of them has gone back to being more natural instead of all cooped in. Like it's not meant to be like that when all your toes are pressed together. But anyway, I went there, I got severe blisters, hot spots and border in trench foot and it was so uncomfortable. I just didn't want to be on that hike anymore because my feet, I couldn't walk very well. I felt like I was limping and it was just so painful. It was really painful. So I wasn't enjoying as much where I was because my feet, and then it took me, I think it took a solid month for them to fully heal because the blisters were just where I'd been walking, I think it was like 11 days, just constantly walking on blisters. I thought there must be something that's more healthier for your feet and that isn't just putting it in a tiny little box really. And I loved my ultras as well. 
So then I went to Vivo's and you've obviously got the tiny little, not tiny soles, but not loads of cushioning like you normally get. Your feet can fully spread out which is amazing because your feet are meant to spread aren't they because when you're pushed together and they sweat and rub that's where you get uh, blisters if you're interested in vivos i am now an ambassador and they've kindly given me an affiliate link for those of my supporters followers subscribers who want to buy some so which is really lovely so if you're interested i will leave my affiliate link and my discount code for you to have a look and see if you like them or purchase some and get a bit of a discount off i think it's 10 percent right so now i'm gonna make <laughs> right so now i'm gonna make some flapjacks got all my ingredients here uh, flapjack my knife and get my spatula into some sort of good shape I was going for a simple one just to do each task that was quite thin and good for cooking all sorts but it's quite simple and effective but whilst I'm doing that I'm not sure how I'm looking for volume but I'm gonna answer my questions right so thank you so much if you sent in some questions for me to answer so first one was how on earth do you upload such huge videos when you're out on the road love your work keep posting so that's from freddie thank you for the question at the minute we are not currently in the van full time i have been at my parents a lot we've literally had the van parked on the drive and just been living there at the minute obviously they've got wi-fi but if if that isn't the case then i usually which is a really good tip because i don't have to have the wi-fi but it just helps i either go sit in a cafe somewhere and use their wi-fi and charge my bits and bobs or i will send the video that is exported to my phone via airdrop and then upload it off of my 4g to find somewhere that's got good signal and then it's usually quite quick depending on how big the video is it does take a while especially the lee jog one i think that was nearly an hour uh someone asked did i navigate with my phone yes i did i had os maps on my phone and i tried to map a route and a rough map a stage each day and then download it and that's what i did have i given any thoughts to come into the usa yes i have and this year again was just spent in the uk again i think time just gets a hold of you you end up doing so many little trips and since the beginning of the year i've been going away constantly just in the uk nothing massive abroad um i was hoping to go to iceland and do a bike packing trip but then i was like hmm, maybe i should build up to that so i stuck to doing lands in the john o'groats as 
a beginner sort of thing but they're definitely there's still months left and me and Jake are actually thinking of going to Sweden at the end of the year and maybe going over there for a couple of weeks and I think this winter I really want to plan to go elsewhere and USA is definitely on the agenda Canada would be definitely be on the agenda when I think of going abroad, when I think of going away, I really would like to do something adventurous, something challenging. So I'd love to just take my tent and have the skills and the confidence just to go to another country and do a long hike, a canoe trip, bikepacking trip, etc. I'd also like to do workaways as well. They sound really cool if you stayed on a homestead and learnt some really beneficial skills. Right, that should be a little bit better. I've got quiet voice as it is, so I could find myself pretty much shouting over the wind. It's picked up now. What do I prefer, hiking or cycling? I love everything to do with the outdoors. And as you know, I post a lot about each different thing I do. Um, so I love pat rafting, I love canoeing, I love hiking, I love cycling, I love bushcraft. I love, I love just everything, trying different things. Also this year, try climbing, which was so cool. I love merging the whole of sleeping outside, cooking outside with another hobby. I think it's perfect. So I really can't choose on that one. Obviously it is hard and confusing for people to watch me because you may watch me for bushcraft and then next week I'm off flitting off on a bike and you're not engaged with that. Someone said, hi, very inspiring me. I know your age, I'm 23. Um, I'm wondering if it's a little too early to go camping on my own. I am 20 now and I will be 21 next year in April and I don't think it's ever too early. I started doing solos when I was 15 and I think that's the only thing that's keeping me doing it now. If you don't start early I think it's harder to get into it and have gained that confidence and independence later on. Still do it but it might just be a little bit harder. I get so many questions of don't I get scared? being a solo woman just camping and being outside on doing adventures on by myself and I think not really because it's whatever you get used to whatever it is you just get used to it and when you're passionate about something the fear so the passion sort of outweighs the fear obviously at the start it was harder and I think bloody hell I'm on my own and if anything happened I'm on my own and there's a lot of weight on your shoulders but now I just love it and it's so addictive and I think a lot of people probably wonder why I want to go off on these adventures by myself but it's great for self-development but you definitely become a more selfish person. Someone said can you leave your tent and stuff alone when you leave this site and also people want to know the name of the woodlands where it is. I'm no not going to tell anybody where this woodland is I don't think that I should either. A place where I come to and really be by myself and can feel peaceful and free here. Uh, this isn't my woodland anyway, it's a friend of mine that's private and you're allowed to set up these, these shelters which is so nice and I'm really grateful and really lucky. But yeah, this is in Surrey and that's <laughs> pretty much all I'm going to say. Someone said, what's your favourite camp spot in the UK? I'd always say Scotland. I love Scotland. It's always gives off a wild feeling and it's so beautiful so diverse you've got mountains you've got rivers you've got locks you've got obviously the culture is really nice but it's also really silent this place is peaceful but it's not silent because you've always got like road noise and outside influence and you've got people in the distance and you've got flight paths over here you'll probably hear a lot in my videos the planes that go over someone said are you ever going to write a book favorite hike tips etc i'd love to write a book if i had to be honest i don't have the balls at the minute to write a book because i feel like i need a lot more experience i need to read a lot more books to gain that sort of writing knowledge another question is how long did lee jog take you to do in the end so yeah in the end it took me about 18 days that was sticking to the gb divide route and while camping and stopping off along the way but it was such a mega trip and i really really enjoyed it right next question is when you're feeling at your worst what makes you want to go out for a hike or a camp i think when i am feeling my worst the best medicine the best thing to make me feel better is either going outside whether that's just 
cooking outside, being barefoot, going on an adventure or going away in the van, just something like that always makes me feel a lot better. A lot of the time I feel so disconnected, a lot less happy I guess when you're really disconnected from the outside world. So yeah, I'd say that. And obviously exercise, adventure, it's just so good for you um, mentally, physically and for your soul. But if you are feeling like that and you're wanting some sort of motivation, I think watching YouTube, reading books and just finding out what really that you love and what you're passionate about and then it will just shine through. Um, what would your advice be for someone looking to find some permission woodlands to camp in? Ask around, I guess. If you find a plot of land, someone might not even be using it, so you could potentially buy it if you have the money, or just find the landowner and ask permission. A lot of places are run by sort of like a, a company, like a woodland company, a forestry commission sort of thing. So I think it's always best to ask just in case and so you feel comfortable that you're not always gonna get kicked off I hate that feeling next question is how much planning do you go do go do for where to go where to stay um I sometimes I literally plan last minute and I get an idea in my head and I'm like I've got to go do that so for some trails that I've done, I've literally looked at it a week previous and then I'm like, sod it, I'm going to just go do it. And because I have a lot of the stuff and I know what a hike's like, then I can just get up and go. But obviously for things abroad or bigger trips, it needs a lot more planning. Another question is, do you have a favourite outdoor place that kind of feels like home to you? Definitely here is a place that I love to and I feel really settled here and somewhere that I can really chill but also learn skills. What is your favourite meal to make or eat while you're in the bush? And that is from Nick. Thank you for the question. Um, I'd say a solid spag bowl. Which model RE10 is it? You have a 10 or a 12 man. It is a 10 man Arctic military tent and I've loved it. I also bought the liner that goes with it, which are quite rare to come by now, but such a life changer, that liner that I got. Makes it so much brighter, more homely, more warm. It reflects the light because it's obviously white. And um, I love the tent. It's been amazing here. It's seen so many different weather conditions. Someone said from Janet, thank you for your questions. How do you keep your food cold when you are at the camp uh, if you're staying longer than one night? or do you shop regularly? I bring the Petromax cool box that you would have seen. This time of year it isn't too bad because it's quite cool. So during the winter I don't really need to bother or I'll just bring more long life stuff like tins, make my own bread, um, that sort of thing, and vegetables. But if I'm bringing meat and things that go off quickly, then I usually put ice in the Petromax cool box or like cool, cold cold box and then leave it in there and it's perfect where do i see myself in five years time and i really like this question and when i meet people i always seem to ask this question to someone because i find it really interesting because you can base their sort of direction what they like doing i guess i'd love to get more traveling under my belt and my bucket list destination is alaska and i've banged on about it for so long and it's just a beautiful and wild place. And what I love about Scotland, I feel like you put it in Alaska and it's 10 times that. Also like Canada, New Zealand, parts of Europe, Sweden, Scandinavia area, so many beautiful places. And I've got a real yearning to travel and test my skills, meet different cultures. And I love if I could actually witness meeting a sort of primitive tribe, that would be awesome and just get more skillful, more self-reliant, learn really wholesome skills that will benefit me because in the far future, I'd love to live a sort of on a remote homestead or like cottage or something like that and grow my own vegetables and hunt and just live self-sufficient and not have to listen to the man, I guess. And um, everything is going along to that pathway in that journey. And also be on YouTube, that would be pretty cool to still make a living on YouTube. Next question is a bit personal, but how do you afford to do this? Also, I'll not take offence if you don't answer. 
How do I afford to live my lifestyle? I don't have massive expenditures, so I don't buy loads of things. I don't own my own house. I don't spend loads. At the minute, I flip between going on trips, living at my parents' house, and, and living in Jake's van, but I also up and coming want to get my own van and spend a lot of time living on the road in my own van. So between all of that, and if you do live van life, it is so cheap. I afford this through YouTube. I afford it through integrations with companies. As much as it does annoy you guys, I still got to make a living. Also, I'm setting up a blog now, so that'll be another revenue. And Patreon, my patrons really, really, really support me, especially when time's low on YouTube. And I really, really want to thank you all for supporting me for so long. So yeah, that's pretty much it affords a lifestyle that I live and obviously trips that I go on don't cost much because I'm living in a tent living on cheap food and a lot of the time I'm in the UK so it doesn't cost a lot and I've said before and I'll say it again that I'd rather be happy and feel content and be living a more freer lifestyle that means less work but it also means less money than doing a nine to five and buying whatever I want, but also being trapped into a job that I might not enjoy. And I always put my happiness first. I just wanna say thank you for all the lovely questions. Thank you for everyone for supporting me. And I'm sorry if I waffled on here, but I really appreciate all the constant support and uh, any shares, likes, comments, whatever. It goes a long way. Right, we have now come to an end of another video. Just packed up everything, now gonna shut the tent away. The usual routines is just locking everything up and putting the flue down, and that's me. Got the wheelbarrow to lug everything back up to my car, which is quite a bit of a walk, but not too far, like if you had to go on a big hike or something. But it allows me to bring so much stuff and really just get into bushcraft skills. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting me and making this possible, as well as all the people who have bought me a coffee and buy me a coffee page. So take care and I'll see you on the next video. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines this ain't where I belong Ain't looking me, mana, what I've been